though you're strangers to me. And I came this morning to help you if you let me. Now, if you don't want help, I give you permission to take a nap. I'm not even going to bother you. Amen? But if you really want to be a champion for God, if you want to have the spirit of a champion, if you want to do something for Jesus in your life, for your whole life, not just for a little while, uh, I got something that will help you. Uh, normally, I have a lapel on because I like to come down into the crowd. Uh, where's the sound man at? Where's he at? Where's the sound man? Is he not there? If we got a lapel, bring me a lapel. I would prefer to have that if possible. Uh, turn in your Bibles to uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, and we'll look at verse 10. And uh, normally, I only preach 30 minutes. That's all I preach because uh, that's all that people can handle. I have found that out as a pastor now, that most people can only handle 30 minutes of preaching. Does anybody know why? Because that's what we've been programmed by the sitcoms, 30 minutes and with a few breaks. And I will even give you a few breaks if you need it, amen? But if you'll get this one truth in your head, in your tiny little head of yours that you have, if you'll get this one truth, uh, Brother Hiles taught me to get one truth into people, and you did a good job. If you can just get one. Now, I'm only going to give you one truth, packaged with a lot of stuff, but it's only one truth. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10, is the church there? And you are the church. Well, we're, ju we're, just the, 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 we're just the teenagers. No, you are the church. You are the next generation that will have to take over. Uh, you will not believe this, but there was a day that I sat where you sit right now. I was just a young guy loving the Lord. Well, I got saved at the age of 11. At the age of 13, I promised God I was going to serve him. I didn't know how, but I wanted to serve God my whole life. And I'm on that journey right now. Um, uh, yesterday was my birthday. I turned 51 years old. Amen. Happy birthday, Brother Johnny. Amen. Thank you. And it was my privilege to preach last, last night at our church. Bring that up here. Let me try to put this on, okay? Stay right there. Stay right there. Okay, as I do this, look at each other and smile. All right? Go ahead. You got my permission. Go ahead, guys. Look at them. Uh, guys, there's, there's no queers in the house, right? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. There ain't no queers in the house. If you're not looking at the chicks, then I'm, I worry about you. Amen? Pray, I, I, hey, look. I always tell my young people, don't make something clean. Don't make it dirty. It's natural for young people to admire and like each other. Adults, can you get over that right there? Amen? Sometimes the adults can't figure that out. They're going to look at each other. They're going to talk to each other. Amen? And that's okay. Is the wireless on? I'm okay now. What is your name? Jacob. Man, you're a handsome man, dude. Amen. Praise God. Man. You're, you must be like a chick magnet, huh? Yeah. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. All right. Praise God. Everybody there at that verse now? Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. The Bible says here, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with Thy might. Everybody not understand what he's saying there? Whatever your hands you put it to do, do it with all your might. Now, let me show you why. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. Don't you like that preacher? He's talking about you're going to die. And listen to me, you're in the process of dying right now, whether you know it or not. So if you're going to live for God, you better do it today. Some of you might not have tomorrow. See, sometimes we're young and we think we're going to live forever. We're not. Let me tell you right now, at the age of 18, I lost my baby brother to a brain tumor. A year and a half struggle with a brain tumor. One of the hardest things that our family went through. His name was Eddie, uh, 11 months younger than me. We were like this. 
And if he were here today, him and I would be preaching together. Amen? And I still feel that loss. But I know that I will see my brother again. And so this morning, I want to help somebody. Does anybody want help? Does any, I mean, seriously, is there anybody here, you know, uh, 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 Brother Johnny, I want help. I want to live for God. I want to do it. But it's not easy in the day that we live in. I want to help you if you'll let me, okay? Now, let, we got the verse down. Let's read it one more time. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whether thou goest. Okay? Now, this morning, let me pray, and then I'm going to preach at you. I don't think I'm going to teach this morning. Because it's morning, and you guys are asleep. Amen? But it... I, man, and you already heard about an hour's worth of preaching. I was out there listening to him. It's like, man, he's taking up some of my time. Somebody cut him off, amen? But I got 30 minutes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come at you like a, like a firecracker, okay? Because you guys are asleep. All right, do me a favor before I pray. Everybody stand up and stretch. Now stretch like you're at home. Come on, girls. Stretch like you're in front of the mirror. Ah! Yeah, come on, right there. Ah, oh, yeah. Anybody want to do some Richard Simmons? Amen. Amen. Yeah, there, you got my permission. Wake up. Amen. Praise God. All right, everybody feel better now? All right, go ahead and sit down now. I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to help somebody. Father, Lord, I love you so much. God, you help me now. Holy Spirit of God, you help me to do the very best I can do. Lord, most of these young people, I don't know them. They're strangers to me, but I love them. I love that you love them. And you got dreams for them and hopes. And Father God, now help me this one truth that it would penetrate the heart. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, come and do what I cannot do. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, somebody put this for me. That's nice. I've never drank that much stuff while I preach. I drink a lot of water when I preach, amen? And aren't you glad, aren't you glad that uh, in the Baptist church, we're not like the Catholic church, and we drink that wine? Yeah. Can you imagine me on wine? Boy, you... <laughs> man, I'll tell you what, I'd, I'd mess you up. Hey, uh, this morning, the spirit of doing my best. Amen? I want somebody here this morning, when you leave here, you're going to go and tell everybody, I'm going to live and do my best. Whatever I put my hand to do, I'm going to be the best I can be. Anybody here like Tim Tebow? Anybody? I love Tim Tebow, man. I love me some Tebow. Praise God. Amen? Hey, somebody gave me one of his books. That man don't mess around. Hey, I know he's not from our circles. I know he's not our type of Christians. I don't think I don't know that. Amen? But he loves the Lord, and he's, man, he is a man with a passion. With a passion for football. Amen? Now, he doesn't throw a very good football. How many of you can recognize that? How many of you that know football, man, that guy can't throw very good. Uh, Brother Johnny, I know. But he's in the NFL. And he won two national championships. Heisman Trophy winner with a terrible throwing mechanism. He had something, didn't he? Amen? And I'll tell you what, I believe if the Jets would have given him a chance, he would have won two or three games for them. How many of you believe that? Because he just has a will to win. Amen? And I'm going to say something. He stands up for Jesus. And you know what, guys? I pray for that guy. I pray he doesn't mess up his testimony with some woman. Come on, wave at me. Wave at me. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> hey, let, let me help you. Some of you are going to mess up your testimony with a boy or a girl. But I promise you this, I'll still love you. I won't turn my back on you. I know what it is to struggle. Amen? Hey, uh, 
You know, one of the greatest weapons that Satan uses against us is we get in this mindset, we get in this spirit, just get by. Let me just get by. How many of you are getting by? This is age 13 to 17, right? So everybody in here is in high school, right? How many of you are getting by in high school? Anybody, any freshmen in the house? Let me see the freshmen. Take it easy, take it easy. Don't let your nerdness come out. Amen? Every freshman has an inner nerdness that wants to come out. Amen? And are you doing your best in school? What if, hey, if I went to talk to your teachers, what would they tell me about you? Do they even know that you're a Christian? Do you hide it well? Amen? If I went to talk to your principal, tell me about, let me pick on this girl. What's your name? Bianca? I said that good for Mexican dinner. Bianca. Bianca, if I went to talk to your principal, what would she tell me or, he, or what would he tell me? Are you the troublemaker? I got swats. They don't swat y'all anymore, right? Oh, I wish they'd bring that back. <laughs> back when I was in junior high, I got caught. Now, you guys probably won't even know what I'm talking about because this is in the old days before, you know, we had cell phones or anything like that, you know. Amen? I got my cell phone on right now because I'm expecting a call from my best friend to wish me. I wished him a happy birthday. Mine was yesterday. His is today. My best friend. I want to have, I want to be the best friend I can be. Write that down. I want to be the best friend I can be to a friend of mine. Amen. If you have a best friend, why don't you dedicate yourself? I'm going to be the best friend to that person that I can be. I'm not going to talk bad about them. I'm not going to gossip. I'm not going to make fun of their glasses. I'm not going to make fun of their nose. I'm not going to make fun of their haircut. How many of you in this crowd, if I were to say, uh, man's haircut, how many of you know what that means? A man's haircut. That means a number two on the side, yeah. number four on top, yes, clean over the ears, and clean on the back. Yeah. Some of you go and tell your barber that he'll fall out of his chair. You want a man's haircut? I'll give you one. Amen. Uh, we, what is our testimony? Everybody here has a testimony already. Already you have a testimony. Did you know that? I could go and talk to the people that love you. And I could ask them, what is your name? You got a hard name. Let me pick somebody with an easy name. What is your name? David. David. A biblical easy name. Amen? <laughs> David. David, you have a testimony. If I went to talk to people, they would tell me. Yeah. Everybody listen to me. Be the best friend you can be. Uh, why? Why, Brother Johnny? Because you're a child of God. How many of you are saved? You're, you, you, if you were to die, if I were to kill you right now, you'd go to heaven. Oh, man, this guy's going to kill people. No, I'm not going to kill anybody, okay? Hey, you know it. If you know that if you were to die today, I'm going to heaven, that means you're supposed to be a Christian. You know what I have found in the Christian world? I have found there's a lot of believers and not enough Christians. Because Christians tell everybody, I'm like Jesus. Are you like Jesus with your mouth? Are you like Jesus when you text? How many of you would love for me to read, you, read your text right now? How many of you would throw your hands up? Brother Johnny, you can read my text. I'm all right with it. Okay. I got a few takers. After the service, meet me in the back, and I'll check it out, see what you've been texting. Ooh, girl, you got the prettiest eyes. Hey, let me give you my best pickup line. Anybody would love to have my best pickup line? A girl? Wow, a girl wants my best pickup line. Hey, I used to go up before I met my... my, my uh, I fell in love when I was 
going into my senior year with my wife to be. She's the love of my life, okay? But before I met her, I would go up to young ladies and I would look at them. I said, man, you look thirsty. Can I buy you a Coke? That was my pickup line. And they would throw them because everybody likes Coke, right? What's your favorite drink? Pepsi. Okay, I like Pepsi too. Amen? I like Pepsi too. I can remember. Can I? Okay, I'm going to tell you a story, but you can't tell the adults. You're an adult, aren't you? Okay, for the next about 17 minutes, you're a teenager. So you can't go tell the adults. Don't go run into Buena Carizales and tell them what I'm going to tell them. I remember the first time I saw my wife. My wife's name is Patricia. I was working at a coffee shop. I was a, I was a uh, busboy, waiter. Nice name. Amen. Amen. And uh, so I was working there, and I was, I'm not saying this in pride, I was one of the best workers there. I had a reputation with the owner and with uh, uh, everybody. Johnny's a hard worker. Johnny doesn't come in late. He comes in early, stays late. You call him, he'll come in on his day off to come help the place. That was my reputation. Okay? So what I'm preaching this morning about doing your best at whatever you're doing, I'm, I've lived that. I lived that in my life. Okay? But I saw my, I was like standing right here and I saw this girl walked in the back with her mom, and I knew her mom already. Her mom uh, kind of was like the manager of the place, and she already liked me. The mom already knew, hey, this kid's going places. He's a good worker. He's going places. And she walked in, and I'm like, Ooh, man, that chick is hot. What is her? What is her name? What is her name? I started asking, what's her name? And somebody finally said, Patricia, oh, Patricia. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, I love calling my wife, Patricia. In the mornings, I come looking for her. Why are you, Patricia? <laughs> what? And you know what she says? Leave me alone. <laughs> no, we're married. It's legal now. Back in the day, they wouldn't even let us hold hands. Do they let you guys hold hands? Do y'all have the six-inch rule around here? Six inch? But we better make it a foot, don't you think? <laughs> no? No, okay, six inch. This one's no, no, make it three inch. I'm fine with that, amen. <laughs> hey, guys, I had a reputation. At that time, I was uh, probably 16. I had a reputation, guys, of being a hard worker. And Patricia's mom was already my friend. I had already won her heart. Because I would work hard, and she saw that, and she admired that, and she saw that I was a young man of integrity. Now, I was not perfect. Please don't misunderstand that. I'll tell you some stories, but you got to promise not to tell your pastor. Okay? Anybody want to hear my story about the first time I smoked? Hey, I didn't say marijuana. Some of y'all settled down back there. Amen. It was just, it was just, there was these cigarettes called Cools. Anybody know what Cools are? I, I don't know. Anyway, there was this, and I'll, see, this is, listen to me. I always got in trouble because of girls. Girls always get, uh, uh, there was this girl named Sonia. And we were at this uh, Southern Baptist Church. I was going there, and I was probably age 12, I think, uh, Maybe four. I kind of forget times sometimes. Uh, and Sonia comes up to me and oh, well, Sonia, good looking, hi, hi, hi. <laughs> Sonia, you're pretty. And Sonia comes up and talks to me. Oh, she talked to me. Sonia talked. Ooh. <laughs> and Sonia goes, "Would you like to go smoke a cigarette in back of the church?" I know Jesus won't like it, but I'm going. <laughs> I'm going. And I went with Sonia. Brother, look, he's looking at me with judgment. Look, he's judging me right now. I was young, brother. And pretty girls would, woo. <laughs> See, I, I like when adults are not in here because then I can just be me. And you guys understand that life is real, right? But Sonia, she was beautiful, man. I, 
way, and come on, let's go smoke a cigarette. I didn't know anything about cigarettes. Amen. And apparently Sonia did. So she had a cigarette, and you know how they do all that stuff, you know. And then they light it, and, and then Sonia went like, An angel cloud, you know. <laughs> and then she handed it to me. Ay, mira, I'm about to touch something where Sonia's lips touched. <laughs> I know you're not like me. I know you guys are good Christians. Oh, man. But anyway, I took the cigarette. And I didn't know anything about cigarettes. What is your name, brother? Antonio. Brother Antonio. My deacon's name is Antonio. Antonio, what I did... I took the cigarette from Sonia's hand. Can you see me there? Little young punk trying to act cool. I'm cool, but I wasn't sagging my pants. I don't sag my pants for anybody. Amen. If I gotta be, if I gotta sag my pants to be cool, I'm gonna be Urkel. Amen. I'm gonna pull them up to here. Amen. Steve Urkel. Amen. I'm not sagging my pants for anybody. Amen. But anyway, I took the cigarette, and I. Not was coming out of everywhere. Ah! Sonia's looking at me like, ah! and I'm, I'm not kidding you, man. How many of you have ever smoked a cigarette and took a big drag? Look, nobody's going to raise their hand. Look, ah! it's like they're videotaping. Don't raise your hand, dummies. <laughs> they're videotaping. Don't raise your hand. I just realized I should have told this story. They're videotaping. Everybody's going to know. Hey, guys, I thought I was being cool, right? But I burned my lungs. It burned my lungs. It hurts. Not coming out of everywhere. Do you know I never smoked again? To this day, I thank God that it burned my lungs. I never smoked again, ever. I don't care if Sonia invited me or not. No, thank you, Sonia. Jesus doesn't like it. See, now I got spiritual because... I, honestly, guys, God almost killed me. God almost killed me. Hey, can I help you this morning? Be the best you can be. Hey, girls, be the best girl you can be. You know the best girl you can be? Is to be a virgin till the day you get married. Anybody want to just wave at me? I know they don't let you girls say amen, right? Anybody want to wave at me? Hey, <laughs> you're going to have to decide that. You're going to have to decide that. Say, so you know what, Brother Johnny, I, I, I do. I, I want to be a virgin till the day I stand with my husband before the preacher. And we say our vows to God. I want to give him that gift of virginity. How about you, young man? Any young man, does that mean something to you? Hey, I know in this day and age that we live in, everything's dirty, but it's not dirty. God gave us sex, and under marriage, it's beautiful and it's wonderful. One of the most precious gifts you'll ever get on this earth if you won't mess it up. Don't mess it up. Is there anybody here, a, a young man, you're a virgin? Hey, talk about that in high school, right? Talk about it. They make you look weird. You're a virgin? Really? Yeah. Really? <laughs> really? And they tease us about it. Yes, they tease you. Oh, yeah, look, there goes a virgin. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, amen. Praise the Lord. In my church, they like that. Amen. Hey, young man, won't you be the best young man you can be? Keep yourself pure till the day you stand at the altar with your girl that God's going to give you and you say your vows before God. Amen. How many, how many of you have ever thought, how many of you are when you read the Bible you really read the Bible. See when I read the Bible I really read the Bible. How many of you have ever thought about when God brought Eve to, uh, to Adam. Hey Eve. I mean hey Adam. Here, here's your gift from me to you. How many of you think Eve was beautiful? I think Eve was foxy, man. <laughs> and I think Adam looked at her and he's like, Joy! 
And God said, this is yours. I'm going to marry you. Oh, well, hurry up, God. Because <laughs> I want to touch her. Amen. See, some of you read the Bible. I've never saw that in the Bible. Some of you are going to go home. I want to go find that. In, is it in the NIV? Where's it at? <laughs> but it's in there. Because God tells them, go and multiply. Can anybody figure out what God was telling them? Can anybody figure out what God was telling them to do? Go and multiply. What was God saying? And it wasn't dirty. The way y'all make it. Gentlemen, stay away from the pornography. It will destroy you. I mean destroy you. I mean destroy you from the inside out. You'll be worthless. You'll never know how to love properly. Preacher, how do you know I have, to, I have to help men? They're trying to love their wife purely, and they're having such a hard time because they, they put their eyes on something they shouldn't have put their eyes on. Everybody listen to me this morning. Not a game. This is real life. Keep yourself pure. Amen. Be the best pure young person you can be. Everybody listen to me. Now this morning, God wants to make champions. Ask God to forgive you for living so carelessly. Amen. Some of you have lived life carelessly. Let today be the day that it stops. I will no longer live life carelessly. I will be engaged. I will ask God to forgive me. I will recognize it as sin. I will know that it is wasteful not to do my best. Examine yourself this morning. Do I do my best? Now, everybody say that. Do I do my best? Say it. Now, answer it. Answer it, because you know what? You know the answer, and God knows the answer. And it doesn't matter what I think. And it doesn't matter what your parents think. I go talk to your parents, and they are so, what's the word I want to use? Gullible. Oh, my little girl, Brother Johnny, my little girl, she's so innocent. If you only knew what I know. She's the first one to hunt the guys down when I take them to conferences. And if I would let them, they come home with phone numbers. Oh, guilty parties, huh? <laughs> Brother Johnny, but you said that it's okay to like the, the opposite sex. Yes, but don't make it dirty. Tell your youth counselor. Amen? Now, some of them might not be able to handle it. I always tell my young people, tell me who you like, and I'll pray for both of you. Amen? And I, I took one of my, now he's 20 now, and I'm going to run out of time, but that's okay, okay, because I'm going to stop right when I'm supposed to. But I took one of my young guys, he's 20 years old, he's been under my ministry at, from the age of 16 till now, and I, I took him to a, a, a conference where I knew there would be a lot of beautiful girls there. And this beautiful girl, she can sing, she's going off to Bible college, and she comes up and talks to him. And I'm sitting right there. She didn't come to talk to me. I can't believe it. <laughs> Amen. But she came up to talk. And you know what he did? He went like this. And I'm like, stupido. <laughs> but I couldn't say nothing because I didn't want to make him look worse than he already. And, and the poor girl was trying to talk to him. Hey, how you doing? And and what is your name? Menso. <laughs> Say something. Say hello. Say something. You know, when he's with the guys, he's a yapping. <laughs> but here comes this pretty girl talking to him. She came to him. What's your name? And after a while, I mean, it's like, oh, she left. Amen. And then after she's gone, I'm like, what's wrong with you, dude? She came to talk to you, man. When I was your age, I'd die for that. 
I remember the one time a girl uh, sent another girl. She likes you. What? She well, what's not to like? Amen. I took him back the next night. I coached him up. I said, look, man, if she comes and talks to you, talk to her. Ask her her name. What's your favorite color? <laughs> What's your favorite Bible verse? Keep it spiritual. Even though you could care less, I could care less. Bible verse, get that out of here. <laughs> and he, she came, we, I took him back again, and here she comes. Beautiful girl. I mean, beautiful, man. She could say like an angel. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. <laughs> of all the guys she could go talk to, she comes and picks my guy. Hello, how you doing? It's, good to be glad. it's so good to have you back again. What do you think you did? <laughs> Dork. <laughs> have any of you girls ever experienced that? Where you go to talk to the guy, you, you, you build up the, man, I need to talk to him. I, he looks nice. He, he looks handsome. I want to talk to him. And you go up and talk to him. Hello. <laughs> it's 11 o'clock. About a minute till I'm out of time. I have about an hour's full of notes back there. You need to be the best you can be. Right now, in this stage of your life, you guys are in high school, right? Be the best high schooler you can be. Amen? Hey, I hate to tell you this, but this is a true story. All my stories are true. I don't lie, man. I just, I'm, I'm, just trying to, I'm just trying to live out my Christianity. And I'm trying to be real and not try to fake you guys out. Because there's nothing to fake. Okay? Because you guys are living it. I took... Introductory Algebra 1, Introductory Algebra 2, Algebra 1, Algebra 2 in high school. Obviously, you could tell that I'm not very good at algebra, right? <laughs> Amen? But I took it. And man, in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, I had the same teacher, and she was like, she was like a prison guard. You walked in, you said a word, out! You said one word, principal. Get out! I ain't got time for this nonsense. Johnny, I'm trying to teach. Prison is the incorrect term. It's correctional officer. Is that the correct word? Well, whatever it is, but she was tough. Okay? You're the kind of girls they ain't going to talk to. Amen? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, listen to me. Guys, I got, I want to help somebody. I got straight D's, algebra one, algebra two. Straight D's. At the end, well, Antonio, I was, I was heartbroken, brother, because I had worked hard. I had worked really hard, but I was no good at algebra. I went up to the teacher and I said, I said man, I, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You, did, you worked so hard to try to help me. And she goes, what's, what's your problem? Look at these Ds. She goes, this is what she said, be proud of it because you earned it. You worked very hard to get that D. And I did, guys. And I wasn't good at it. But I passed the class. <laughs> now, can I do algebra? No. Hey, <laughs> but listen to me. Do you know I can figure this whole complex, I can figure every piece of material that this place would need. I used to bid jobs. Before I was a pastor, I was a contractor. I made money building things. And I could figure stuff. People would be amazed how good I could figure stuff. Amen. Can, can I say something? And I, I have to finish. I believe God honored that I worked hard to get that D. I believe God honored that. And he gave me great brain power where I can figure things that other people can't. And I can work with engineers. I can understand them, and I can explain to them what they're telling me. Because sometimes engineers can't explain things. They can figure it, but they can't explain it. 
I can explain it to people. What are you trying to say, Brother Johnny? Where are you at, man? Are you going to be your best? Are you going to be your best? Are you? Well, let's do it. How about you, buddy? Where are you at? What grade are you in? Um, college. You're in college. Yeah. What college are you in? Uh, are you knocking it out? Uh, are you the best? Okay. Come on, man. Get in there. Honestly, dude, get in there. Be the best you can be. Get that degree, and let's get it going. Let's get it done. God wants to use you. What, what are you studying in? Oh, man, messing with the brain. That's my job. Stay away from that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Where are you at, dude? You, right there. You, with a nice, man, you got a cool look going on. If I had that look, chick magnet all the way. Come on, man. <laughs> High school, freshman. Eighth grade. Hey, my, right there, dude. I remember eighth grade. It was the best year of my life, man. <laughs> Best year of my life. Best year of my life. Hey, be the best you can be. Where are you at? Are you the best you can be? Really? Anybody here got a boyfriend? Anybody here got a boyfriend? Raise your hand up. Hi. All right. Listen to me. Be the best godly girlfriend you can be. If he tries to touch you, bam! No, baby, you got to marry me before you get to touch this. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm out of time. Every head bowed around close. Talk to God right now. Father, God, help us to be the best we can be. Talk to him right now. What do you need? Where are you struggling? Where are you hurting? Anybody here got a broken heart about something? Did some boy break your heart? Did some girl break your heart? Amen. Oh, I could tell you story after story. Uh, uh, there was this one girl. She was supposed to be my girlfriend in high school. She was making out with one of my friends right in front of the classroom that I was at. That's a true. I'm not making that up. They were making out. I was in my homeroom class, had a bunch of windows. And there she is, stinking Debbie, <laughs> with Rudy. My girlfriend, supposedly, with one of my friends, and ahí estaban chupando. <laughs> and I'm in my classroom, I need a Debbie, she's being loyal. <laughs> Preacher, did that really happen? It really happened to me. I think that's why I'm all messed up. <laughs> How would you like that happen to you? And then my friends, hey, is that your girlfriend out there? No, no. <laughs> no, that looks like her. No, it's, it's somebody else. It's, it's, it's somebody else. It was her, dude. It was her. Hey, girls, don't be like that. Can, girls, wave at me. Preacher, I'm not going to be like that. If I got a boyfriend, I'm going to be loyal. Should I talk to the guys about that? <laughs> guys, if you got a girlfriend, be loyal. If you're not going to be loyal, break it off. I remember my, my, when my wife and I first started dating, she goes, you want to go around? That's what we used to call it back in the day. I go, no, I don't want to go around because I like dating girls. I wasn't ready to be loyal to her. But about three months later, yeah, I want to go around now. I want to go around with you. She's been my girl ever since. That's right. That's right. Amen. Praise God. I'm done. I'm just yapping now. Okay, hey, guys. I love you. I believe in you. Did you hear me? I said, preacher, you don't know me. But I know what it's like to have God in your heart and, and wanting to live for God. I know what that's like. Okay? So if you ever need my help, talk to your preacher. He'll get a hold of me and I can help you. I love young people. I, I really, really do. I don't judge you guys. If I could tell you some stuff that, like, man, preacher... 
You really did struggle to, to love God? I did. I didn't always do right. Amen. Thank you. You guys have been great. Okay.